Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. And by the viewer title, you know what this video is about. As you guys know, every year, I do the roster breakdown for the Miami Heat ever since I started doing the sports stuff for my channel in 2022. So this is another roster breakdown and analysis entering the season. As you guys know, the basketball season um, for the NBA should be starting up in a little bit, a few weeks like that. You know, we got preseason games coming up and of course we get the regular season as well in October. So I want to do a breakdown of our roster the things I like about a roster, you know, break it down each player, um, their previous stats from last year, potentials, um, starting lineups as well, and all the predictions I have too as well in this video. So I'm going to dive into that in this video. So I hope you guys enjoy it and are ready and prepared for it. We have to get into it right now. Let's start off first, of course, with the guards. The guards, the guards, the guards. Um, we have, of course, starting off first, uh, we got Terry Rozier, who was traded to our team last year. You know, Terry Rozier... Um, stats last year with the Heat, um, well, last year in general, like that, kind of his Heat stats and his Hornet stats. 19 points per game, four rebounds, six assists. He played 31 games with the Heat, was traded from Charlotte after 30 games as well. 44% from the field, 36% from three, and 87% from the free throw line. Terrell Zier, um, remember he first got there, he was a little, a little shaky a little bit, getting his um, bearing a little bit. His three point percentage was off, but he started kicking things up a little bit as time went on and he was playing very good until that neck injury happened and he missed the playoffs. I think if we had him in the playoffs, Mike, Mike could have maybe tried to squeeze out another win or two, maybe like in the playoff game against the Celtics, especially if we had Jimmy Butler as well. But Terry Rozier, um, you know, went down with the injury. But I think the Heat getting a full, like, Terry Rozier and getting a full, healthy version of him. And he's been our, underneath our system for like the whole year, like the offseason and learning and training with us. I think he's going to go out there and produce even more. These numbers he had right here is good, but I think he can do even better, especially with his assist totals like that. He can be up there and go out there and deliver like that. I know he's more of a two guard type of guy, but he's going to have him playing more point guard style because he's capable of doing it. But I think um, if he stays with our team, you know, the, the offseason like he's been doing like that, I know he's healed up now too as well. I think we're going to see more chemistry. We're going to see a better version of him as well, more productive version of him as well, and go out there and make some plays for us. The next person I have on the list, of course, Tyler Hero, you know, another guard we have on our team. 20 points last year per game, five rebounds, four assists, 44% from the field, 39% from three, 86% from free throw. He only played 42 games. As you guys know, Tyler Hero missed a lot of games last year from the injury. And Hero has been very consistent. He's been averaging 20 points per game in kind of the same range of numbers and percentages for the past three years straight. And this, I think it's kind of his peak right now, like 20, 21 points per game. Maybe on a different team, if he's a number one option, he might get 25, a game like that. But it's kind of his peak a little bit in a sense. Tyler Hero, don't get me wrong, good, pretty good player. But sometimes, you know, he had those moments where he just – unplayable sometimes you know he had moments where like he's not hitting the shots um he can't play defense as well and he goes out there and just kind of become unplayable last year he did a better job i think overall in being more consistent and also being able to work without the ball in his hands on um, like most of the time and kind of merging with terry rozier and, and different things but hopefully this year he kind of gets better and better with that as well i know the heat fans a lot of heat fans you know fellow heat fans like me Wanted to see how Hero get traded for some better asset to kind of fit our system, fit our scheme. But if Hero stays here, I'm still fine with that, okay, and okay with that as well. I think because Hero has potential, you know, to go out there, I think to be um, that guy who can be a key piece for our team to get to championship level. He just got to find a way to just merge in. Most of the time, it'd be like his shot selection sometimes. Sometimes he have an opportunity to go out there. And, you know, like, he had moments where he'd take too many shots, take the, the wrong shots at the wrong time. And sometimes he had moments where he'd take the best shots. Like, they go out there hitting his shots, taking smart shots in the mid-range. I feel like he used the mid-range a lot more. It can open up his game a lot because I feel like he's just kind of a guy who just gets to the rim or he's going to stand around and shoot a three, which he shoots pretty well, like 30, 39% 30, um, for three. It's, it's very good, pretty good, like, um, percentage for three. But I think he can open this game a lot more if he shut the mid-range jumper a lot and he started playmaking him more a lot and, was off ball a lot more too as well. Um, so we just have to see what Tyler Heroes does this year. He always been very consistent and like averaging the same averages and being a guy who consistently p give you 20 a night. But sometimes it's different type of 20 a night. Sometimes 20 a night and they're taking more, they're taking a lot of shots and that will help your team. Sometimes 20 a night when they're taking less shots and doing playing smart, they help your team like that. So there's different variations of getting it like that. So we'll see what Tyler Hero does this year. You know, hoping for the best, but we have to see. Um, Duncan Robinson last year, 13 points per game, two rebounds, three assists, 45% from field goal, 39% from three, 89% from free throws. He played 62 games. As you guys know, he missed a little bit of amount of games, but he still played enough. 
Um, he did a good job last year in developing and getting to the level. I, I think the past two years he's been doing a good thing. Like I didn't think he'd be able to get to this level where he's able to go in the paint and be able to lay, you know, get some layups, doing um back screen, um like um baseline cuts and stuff, getting to the rim. I'm seeing him drive, take people to the hoop and stuff, and doing different things, learn that little floater that he got. So he, he's finding a way to develop his game. The threat of his three point shot being so lethal. Gets people in the air. Everybody gonna try to like contest it. They're not gonna let him get a free shot. So they contest the shot in the air. He can get himself downhill. He learned some new moves and stuff to get down there and start utilizing his six foot seven height. He's six foot seven. We all knew six foot seven. He just never used it too much. But last year he utilized it a lot more and show you that he can be a viable piece on our team. Averaged 13 points per game last year. Did a pretty good job as well. Uh, and some points he was on one of our um, top scorers like that too. At one point I remember he had different stretches before he got hurt. He was out there putting up 25 points, 30 points, and doing different things. I'm like, okay, Duncan Robinson, that's what we need to see. So I think keeping him around is very good. Um, and I think he's um, going to go out there and be a big piece for us too as well like that in the long run. Just for this year. This year I feel like it's a year that we got to go all in. It's all or nothing a little bit in a sense. Like, I think if we don't win it this year or do what we do this year, I think they might find a way to just blow some stuff up and might switch some things out. Um, Alec Burks is another guy we got. Um, signed during free agency, of course, with the Knicks. He played last year with the Knicks. Last season, stats was 10 points per game, two rebounds, one assist, 37% from the field, which is not too good, which is not good at all. But 38% from three, which is good, and 87% from free throw line. Alec Burke's going to bring a different level from our bench bench scoring like that. He can go out there and get 10 a night off the bench. It's very good. We'll take it. I like that consistent scoring. And, you know, in the playoffs, he went out there and he was like a flamethrower a little bit, catching a flame um, for the Knicks to go out there and give them opportunities and chance against the Pacers. But if Alec Burke can go out there and give us 10 to 12 a night off the bench, you know, a few assists here and there, a few play things here and there like that, we'll take it. We'll definitely take it. So I actually do like the sign of him. Next person we got on the list, of course, is Josh Richardson. He averaged 10 points per game last year. I kind of rounded some of this stuff up. Some of the stuff was like 9.8, 9.9. So I kind of rounded some of the stuff up, like the whole things. 10 points per game, three rebounds, two assists, 44% from the field goal, and on 35% from three-point line, and 94% from the free throw. Four or three games, remember he missed the rest of the season. They had a shoulder injury. He missed um the rest of the year like that with the shoulder injury. Ever since he got back with the Heat, he played pretty good like that. He played good with us defensively, you know, being a guy who can facilitate as well if he have to. And just going out there and just being a solid player, just a solid role player like that, you can trust like that, can give you 10 points um like that and go out there and play some good defense as well and just be a consistent player like that. I think overall bringing him back was pretty nice like that. You know, he's kind of a different player. We first had him on our team, he was pretty good too. But I think now since he learned from different spots when he was the Pelicans, St. Sixers, all type of stuff, he kinda of got back here and he looked a little different and he plays better as well. So I actually like um Judge Richardson being on our team. And the last person we have of course is Pelly Larson. I think I think he'll make the team. I think he'll make the team um, the six foot six, 215 pound guard that got the rookie. Um, uh, he's gonna be a nice piece. We see what he did in summer league like, as well, like that. So, having a guy with height who can be able to score, shoot the three ball, and do different things is always very good and stuff. So, I think he'll make the team. But this is all I have for kind of the point guards. Let me um, move on next part of this video, which is the fours of the Miami Heat. The fours of the Heat, of course, we start off first. With Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler averaged 21 points per game last year, five rebounds, five assists, 50% from the field, 41% from three, 86% from free throw, played 60 games. He missed the playoffs due to injury, of course, you know, that ankle injury he had in the um, play in game against the 76ers. Jimmy Butler is an amazing player. We know what Jimmy Butler's about. I ain't got to go and break down everything about Jimmy Butler. But I think, I do think this is the last year of Jimmy Butler era if he doesn't go out there and win. We can't, we can go, kind of find a way to win because it's kind of like, okay. We're not going to win with this team. Now, maybe they keep him around and bring somebody else in, but I think they might blow it up after this year. I feel like Pat Riley would be like, okay, I've seen enough. You no, know, we um, did the best we can um, with this team and this window. Had some, some success of getting there, but just not finding a way to win it. Uh, I think this is kind of like the, the year four. I think Jimmy Butler will have a big year this year. Contract stuff is coming up as well. I think this is a year kind of the window was almost closing a little bit in a sense. So I think he'll go out there and ball out like that. I, I hope to see him have one of his better, better years in his own um, career in the regular season. We know in the playoffs he go out there and dominate, of course. But the regular season, I feel like he does a lot of you – know, he averaged 21 points per game is still very good. But we know Jim Butler can do better. We know he can put up 26, 27 a night and maybe a, almost a triple-double like that. Average a triple-double maybe as well if he go out there and put his heart into the regular season as well. So I think Jimmy Butler will have a big-time year in the regular season and the playoffs this year just based off of the circumstances that's happening with his contract and the way that like, the direction the Heat might be going if they don't go out there and win anything this year. So, yeah. The next person I have, of course, is Jaime Jaquez. 12 points per game last year he averaged, four rebounds, 
He averaged three assists, 49% from the field. And he also averaged 32% from the three-point line, which wasn't the highest, of course. And also 81% from free throw. 75 games played. Jaime was a pretty good rookie. He hit the injury he had happened that kind of slowed him down a little bit. But overall, he played very good. Good rookie. I think this year his average is going to go up even more. His three-point shooting should go up. I see him in the gym. They had him working out and training and stuff like that. He's probably working on that as well. He's a very versatile piece. He's like a mini Jimmy Butler as well, like that. You know, on Jimmy Butler... They call him the Mexican Jimmy. And <laughs> they was calling him his nickname. They called him Kylo Ren and all type of things like that. He's like Adam Driver. But um, he's a good player. Amazing player. A versatile piece he can put out there. He can play shooting guard. He can play small. He was originally small four, but he can play shooting guard, small four. Mike can play point guard a little bit too as well because he has the playmaking ability to facilitate as well. So he's a nice piece. I like Jaime Hakez. I think he'd be a nice guy for our team. He's going to be a core piece for us in the future. To kind of build around, you know, him, Bam, maybe Hero as well, too as well. Like when Gene Butler is gone and all the things that happen, to kind of go with the core three for our, you know, our big three, like in the next generation. Next, we have, of course, Nikola Jovic. Oh, yeah, I have to pay Jokic on here. It's Jovic. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah, Nikola Jovic. Um, eight points, four rebounds, two assists last year, 45% from the field, 40% from three, and 70% from the free throw line as well. Uh, he played 46 games. No, uh, he was kind of in and out the lineup. He has shown some improvement, and he's only like what, like 21? I, th I think I think I'm older than actually about a little bit. I think he's 21, 22, or something like that. So he's still very young. Still a lot of time to develop and get stronger, get better. We see him getting a lot of improvement. He's a big point guard. I think in a sense, I wish that he would just let him play at a point guard position and be a facilitator. I feel like that'd be nice for him. Um, just got him playing power forward. I think it works out solidly, but I think he'd be better if he played like as a point guard position like that a little bit. But um, Nikola Jovic. Is a very good player. Not, not, I mean, not a very good player, but in the sense, I think he had potential to be a very good player. I meant to say, I'm kind of sleepy right now, guys. I made like, I made like, about like, what, three or four, yeah, like three or four videos like in a row like that at nighttime after I watched that college football game, in Colorado and them in overtime. So I'm kind of sleepy right now. So I say some things that's crazy. No, just let it, just let it slide. But Jovic is a pretty good player in a sense. I think he has a lot of potential to be a good player in this league. I think he has potential to be a guy who can average 18 plus points, you know, but while maybe getting close to 10 assists a night as well, he's a very good piece. I think uh, he's getting stronger and better and, you know, faster and quicker. His IQ is getting better as well out there. And him, especially him getting big time playing time in the playoff games. Um, we was we might have never saw the playoff on the court if the injuries didn't happen. But actually, it was a blessing in disguise. Let him get that experience. It's the same thing for Jaime as well to kind of boost their confidence up. So when the next go around happens, they be ready. Um, the next person we got too is Haywood Highsmith, who we did sign to like a two three year I think the three year deal. We signed him to um, six points um, per game last year. Three rebounds and one assist, 46% from the field, 40% from three-point line, 64% from the free throw, which is a little, which is low. You can get that up. But he's a defensive stopper. They call him um, they call him the um, what they call him like the not the Hacksmith, they call him something. Haywood Hacksmith, I think. Not Haywood Hacksmith, Haywood Locksmith. Yeah, the locksmith like that. They call him that. He lock you down. He has the perfect combination of the long arms like that that can go out there and guard mid positions. He got I think like six five, six six. Around that range a little bit. So he's able to go out there and guard the forwards, able to go out there and guard the guards as well, like that. First out piece for the perimeter and interior defense as well. Does a good job at switching and just always find a way to get his hand on the ball like that. I think um Haywood, the locksmith, you know, is very good. So have him out there as the defensive stopper. You need some of those guys. He's not gonna be a scoring, a super scoring threat, like going out there giving you 20 points. Occasionally he might do that. You know, really like that, he might do that here and there. But he's the guy you know, you get a few threes here and there from him, but you definitely get some lockdown defense from him like that. I love the players like that, you know, like Peter Tucker type guys who play in defense. They're going to hit some shots for you too occasionally, but they're going to lock some stuff down. They're not afraid to guard the other team's best player. And Haywood Highsmith is um, one of those guys as well. Um, moving on next, of course, we have um, the last person who's a forward. Um, it's Kevin Love. Nine points per game last year, six rebounds, two assists, 44% from the field. 34% from three, which is lower than usual. 79% from the free throw, which is lower than usual as well. He's a little older. Of course, he's seen declines. He played 55 games last year. Kevin Love is still a pretty solid veteran, a pretty solid role uh, player to have in this league. Of course, we know he's a Hall of Famer. You know, a future Hall of Famer, you know, champion, the All-Stars, the All-NBA selection, especially with the Timberwolves, the Cavs and stuff. But, you know, the Heat, he's a little older veteran, but he still has enough juice to go out there and deliver some big games to you occasionally here and there as well and has good leadership as well. So I think Kevin Love, it's a nice piece we have on our team and our roster. Um, I think it might be his last year probably, most likely. I think he's like 37, right? I think he's like 36, 37, or maybe 38. I know he's a little older now, but we're going to see 
Um, if he's gonna play this year, I'm gonna play another year. We have to wait and see. But Kevin Love has been pretty solid with the Heat, and this just kind of concludes the forwards I have. Of course, breaking down them. Now let's go to the centers. Um, which is my next part of this video. I'm gonna get to that now. Okay, with centers, of course, Bam Adebayo. We know what Bam is about. The only All Star we had last year. 19 points per game last year. 10 rebounds, four assists, 50% from the field, 35% from three, 76%. From free throw line as well, and he played 71 games. Bam was the big time player um, last year for the Heat. Uh, he played 71 games. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a nice piece. You no, know? he probably could have played the whole season, but you know, some gets him out for rest and had little tweaks here and there like that. Bam was our best player on our team. You know, I feel like this year right here was a little down, not like a slight down year like that. He still played very good, but a slight down year because you know you think he, last year, the year before last was a little better than this. Like number wise and averages wise, but overall defensively, the two way star he become, and also the ability to shoot the three ball now too as well. He expanded his game. That's one thing I love about Bam. Bam never. Um, like not working on something like that. You know, his first time, you've seen him, his first was in the league. You know, um, no, us, us Heat fans who've been here for, you know, a while. Like they know when Bam first got in the league like that, it was maybe 2017, 2018, like that. And, you know, he was kind of just a guy who was super athletic, who can guard around, who can guard and do different things, and, um, who was a big time dunker. You know, throw the lobs up to him like that. He was getting like seven points, eight points a game. But once Jimmy Butler got here, as well, and they started taking Bam stuff seriously and see the potential Bam, Bam had as well. The following year, he just jumped out and became uh, he was an All Star that next year like that. I think in year three, I think he was an All Star. Went out there and balled out like that, and you see versatility. He started adding more to his game. The mid range jumper started coming around, and then now he's adding a three point ball to his game as well. Ability to switch and guard one through five as well. Bam is a dominant player, very good player, amazing player, one of the best players you have in the league today. The best player on the Heat. I know Jimmy Butler's on our Heat too as well, but Bam is the best player on our team. Bam go out there and give it his all every single time like that. Go out there and dominate. So uh, having Bam on a bio is always very good. Um, in Miami like that. He signed a big time extension as well. So hopefully you retire as a Heat because he's very good. And, um, he's one of our top players like that. Our, our, one of our top players in franchise history because he broke a lot of, he broke some records. I think he's closing in on some of the rebound records, some other records as well, too. So, hey, Bam, I hope he can get a championship because he's a very good player. You know, the heart and soul of our team like that. When he's out there, he, he go out there and become the anchor, the little anchor out there for the defense and for the offense as well. His ability to facilitate, his ability to be a guard, to set other guys up. He do so much on the court like that. The thing is that might not get put in the stat sheet. You know, he do the off-ball screens, get guys open for shots, different things to set guys open, be distraction sometimes, occasionally. There's so much like that. Like that. So, Bam sometimes is underrated in my opinion. Some people don't like me put him in the best limelight with some of the best um different guys and stuff. But I think Bam is... One of the best um, centers we have, like that. But moving on next to the next person, of course, is Kaleel Ware. Kaleel Ware is a guy who we drafted, the rookie, who's seven feet, 240 pounds. I think he'll be a nice piece for our team. And we see when he did summer league, he was very dominant. He showed you that he can stretch the floor. He showed you that he can play interior defense. He can rebound and do all the different things that you want a guy can do. The Heat finally went out there and got a guy over six foot six and able to play, you know, um, the power forward and center position. And it's very good. Uh, Thomas Bryan's another guy we have on our team, of course, as well. Six points, four rebounds, um, 58% from the field, 18% from three last year, which was not that, which was bad, of course. 87% from free throw, which I'm surprised was that high, and 38 games played. You know, Thomas Bryant, he's just, he's, 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 he's like a guy just, you just put out there occasionally, rarely, I don't see the court. We had a lot more, um, hoping him early on like that, but seeing him out there, he's just a liability on defense. He just get bodied by everybody. He get dominated down low and stuff, but overall, He's all right like that. He's like, all right, to step in a few minutes here and there to make some things happen. But, yeah. <laughs> also, the other guys, too, as well, who might not be on the roster fully, but they like, I mean, maybe two-way type guys, potentially, depending on what, how things turn out. Keisha Johnson, of course, Josh Christopher, Christopher Zylan Poulin, Isaiah Stevens, and Drew Smith. Of course, we know Drew Smith. But, yeah, but I think the Heat have a solid roster. Now, I will hope for a little more. You know, um, in the terms of like our roster and another star type player, but this roster, if you tell me, is fully healthy. With Terry Rozier fully healthy, Jimmy Butler fully healthy, we have Bam, Hero, and all those guys. I think the roster is pretty solid. And my potential lineup would be actually, well, I'm, I'm made about before I end this video. I'm just the lineup, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna talk about potential lineups. I think um, the point guard should be, of course, Terry Rozier. I would say Duncan Robinson the two. Um, in a, in a sense. So, Terry Rozier at the one, Little Robinson at the two, the three, you pick Jimmy Butler, the four, you pick Bam Adebayo, and the five, you pick Khalil Ware, 
or you can switch it around if you want to like that, but you put it where? I feel like that'd be a perfect lineup. Bam can play power forward, which is his rifle position. And I think Khalil Ware, his ability to stretch the floor, seven foot, interior. Bam ain't got to do all that crazy stuff. And that Bam can just focus on doing other things on the outside. He had Khalil Ware who can trust an interior defender like that. And you ain't got to switch too often either with this lineup as well. Duncan Robinson might be the liability on defense in the terms, but he is a little better at defense. He's also six foot seven, so he can contest some shots as well if he have to to get to the rim on him. But I think this lineup will be good because Terry Rozier is a guy who needs the ball in his hands like that. He can make the plays without the ball in his hands sometimes as well, but he needs the ball in his hands to make plays. I think having him a hero on the court can kind of be a little – a little stagnant can kind of get a little um, messed up in chemistry wise like that and setting the offense up. So having Rozier out there with uh, Duncan Robinson who can stretch the floor, who can play off ball and get to his spots. Jim Butler, he can do all types of things out there. Jim Butler do everything, like playmaker out there. Van Abayo, the things he can do is similar, very similar to as well. And Kalea Ware, I think it'd be a nice like unit right there. Now, the lineup the Heat probably go with most likely would be Rozier, Hero, um, Jimmy, and it'd probably be Jovic, and it'd probably be Bam, which wouldn't be a, it's not too bad of a lineup either, like that, in a sense. But I, I would hope they would go out there and start Khalil Ware with Bam right off the bat and just get that thing going so we can get to the next level already. Because I get tired of seeing, of course, the camera's dying. I, I get tired of seeing, of course, um, some of the stuff like, you know, like us playing small ball. Killer Martin was good. You know, I like Killer Martin, but we can't play too much small ball. That's how we got beat a lot of times in the playoffs. In the playoffs, getting outbodied, getting out rebound by all different type of guys, especially against the Celtics. Um, the, the championship we lost to the Nuggets, we got body, got out rebounded. You had Killer Martin, who's 6'4. I'm 6'3. He's on one inch taller than me, and he weighed like, 30 pounds less than me. I think he's playing power four, trying to guard Aaron Gordon, who's six foot ten. It's not gonna work out too often. And then you see when we play, of course, against the Lakers, similar stuff like that. Small ball. Now we did miss Bam and Gordon Dragons, of course, as well. But you know, playing small ball style. And the centers you did have, like Miles Leonard, he can he can't move. His, you know, he like he's walking with cement in his shoes. So now we have a guy Khalil Ware who can move around, so he can do things with we got Bam as well. We got Jaime Hakez who can guard too as well. You know, of course, Jimmy Butler, what he do. Terry Rozier, pretty solid defender as well. John Richardson as well, who we have. I wish we would have kept D-Line right. We let him go. We should have kept him around. I thought he would be a nice piece as well. But overall, with our, if our roster is fully healthy, the guys we have right here, I think we can go out there and be capable of competing for a championship. We just have to see how far we can get there. I don't know if we'll be able to win it. But I think we definitely can get to the conference championship through wheel and pure guts like we usually do. But can we find a way to win it with, add, with the size we added? And he probably will do an in-season trade eventually. Maybe bring a guy in. We'll have to wait and see. But overall, I think the, the roster, I'm going to give the roster grade a B-. minus. I think a B- minus like that. I feel like we're still missing some star pieces, um, some, some guys who can stretch around the perimeter and play around the perimeter and score for us. But I'm going to give us a B- minus like that. Let me go ahead and end this video before my allergies kill me completely. But if you guys like this video, leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.